So before we begin this episode, just know that all of this was filmed and all the benchmark stuff was done a few months ago. This was supposed to come out before the previous video, but things have just gotten a little squirrely. And so I'll be editing this video and all videos for the immediate future. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's go and start this video. Hello and welcome to another episode of Levy's Customs. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the NVIDIA GT 1030, an entry-level graphics card that doesn't even get the GTX branding. This is the SC model from EVGA, and it's convenient in a few different ways. It comes with a low-profile bracket, meaning you can put this in a small form factor PC, and it only draws 30 watts from the PCIe slot on your motherboard, so it doesn't need any type of external power. All of this makes it very convenient for converting older small form factor office computers into a budget gaming PC. But how well does it actually perform? I mean, what kind of compromises can we expect from such a convenient card? First of all, let's take a look at some specs. It only has 2GB of GDDR5 memory, 384 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1209 MHz and a boost clock of 1544 MHz, and it has single DVI and HDMI ports. It supports OpenGL 4.6, DirectX 12, and Vulkan APIs. NVIDIA recommends a 300 watt power supply or greater, but depending on your hardware, I'm sure a 200 watt power supply would be fine as long as you aren't pushing the system too much. Now, let's take a look at some benchmarks. All benchmarks are performed at 1080p and 100% resolution scale. The test system is running an Intel 6600K overclocked to 4.5 GHz on all cores and 16 GB of DDR2133 MHz memory. CSGO on the lowest settings got an average of 138.8 frames per second and a 1% low of 68.6 frames per second. Counter-Strike Source ran very well but not high enough for high refresh monitors. Cyberpunk 2077 on the lowest settings got an average of 11.1 .1 frames per second and a 1% low of 7.9 frames per second. Suffice to say, this game doesn't run well at all on the GT 1030. Doom Eternal on the lowest settings got an average of 34.7 frames per second and a 1% low of 21.9 frames per second. For the most part, the game was playable, but depending on the area, it would dip down into the low 20s. Far Cry 5 on the lowest settings got an average of 32.7 frames per second and a 1% low of 24 frames per second. This title also felt acceptable to play, but again, it would dip down into the low 20s at times. GTA 5 on the low settings and very high textures got an average of 92.6 frames per second and a 1% low of 62.3 frames per second. GTA ran exceptionally well, in fact, better than I was expecting. The full Resident Evil Village game wasn't out yet when I did the benchmarking for this video, but I did test it on the demo. With low settings and 1GB high textures, the game got an average of 14.5 frames per second and a 1% low of 7.2 frames per second. As you can clearly see, this game didn't run well. While normally playing, it was in the high teens, low 20s, but during cutscenes it tanked hard. Something else I noticed was the game seemed like it was in slow motion when playing. Not sure what that was about. Star Wars Squadrons with the lowest settings got an average of 74.6 frames per second and a 1% low of 51.3 frames per second. Squadrons was another title that surprised me with its performance.
Rainbow Six Siege on low settings and medium textures got an average of 59 frames per second and a 1% low of 43.6 frames per second. FPS will depend on what level you're on. Some stages, frame rate stayed in the low 70s, while in others, it would stay in the upper 40s. League of Legends on the very high preset got an average of 196.7 frames per second and a 1% low of 152.7 frames per second. The GT1030 had no issues playing this game. Fortnite on the low preset and DirectX 11 got an average of 81.2 frames per second and a 1% low of 56.7 frames per second. Fortnite performed admirably on the 1030 and would probably do even better on performance mode. Metro Exodus on the lowest settings got an average of 48 frames per second and a 1% low of 36.7 frames per second. Metro ran much better than I was expecting, and I feel with single player games like this, high frame rate isn't as important as other elements. Warzone on the lowest settings got an average of 20.8 frames per second and a 1% low of 13 frames per second. On the opposite end, for multiplayer first person shooters, you really want high frame rates, as the quicker you can react, the easier it is to succeed. The GT1030 can't accomplish this at 1080p. Left 4 Dead 2 on the highest settings got an average of 131.7 frames per second and a 1% low of 91.1 frames per second. Why benchmark a 12 year old game? Well, Left 4 Dead 2, which came out during the editor in my first semester, is still pretty popular, so I figured I'd throw it in here. Need for Speed Heat on the lowest settings got an average of 26.2 frames per second and a 1% low of 19.6 frames per second. This is somewhat playable, but for a game that needs timing and reflexes, a higher frame rate would be desirable. Overwatch on low settings and medium textures got, well, as I'm writing the script, I realized I don't have any benchmark data. Not sure what happened, but as you can see, this game ran well. So from the benchmarks, we can see that the GT1030 is still capable as long as you're okay with low settings and sub 60 FPS on some titles. And as for newer games, you'll need to lower the resolution to 900p or even 720p to get over 30 frames per second. I picked up this GT1030 back in 2019 for around $85, but now looking at new prices online, there it's, it's hard to find it under $120. And, at least here in my area, on the used market, I've seen the GT1030 go for about the same as brand new, which is pretty crazy. Something else to consider about the GT1030 is it does not have hardware encoding capabilities, uh, NVIDIA's NVEC encoder, and I'm guessing it's because it's missing that X on GTX, but uh, you need a GTX or RTX card in order to use that type of encoding. I think right now in 2021 where GPU prices are astronomical and finding a new graphics card is pretty impossible, although things are starting to get a little bit better, um, it's still going to be going on for a while. But I feel like the GT1030 
could be a good stopgap for people who are wanting to get into PC gaming. Not only do you not have to worry about wading through uh, used prices that are also highly inflated, but as I've been looking online, uh, Newegg and Amazon, I can find GTX 1030s in stock for around $120, which is nowhere near the price of a lot of other stuff. So I feel like this might help people get into PC gaming, you know, just have an old office machine, you know, it could be low profile or not, and you can pop that GT 1030 in there without having to worry about getting a new power supply or will it fit in this case, or will it be bottlenecked by the processor because this, <laughs> this GPU is not very powerful. So I think it uh, could offer a stopgap, like I said. Something to look out for though, uh, Nvidia did this sneaky thing. This car, the GT1030, came out in 2017 and a year later they released a DDR4 version of this card. That's right, not even GDDR, but regular like RAM type of G DDR4 memory on the GT1030. So look out for that because this model is even slower than uh, AMD's integrated graphics. What do you think about the GT1030 by NVIDIA? Do you think it has acceptable performance in the current market situation? Let me know down in the comments. Okay, so before we uh, end this episode, I wanna talk about Patreon. I just started one. Uh, I will be doing um, other stuff that I wouldn't usually put on YouTube, like vlogging, uh, behind the scenes and uh, computer builds as uh, YouTube uh, does not uh, do computer builds well. It's just apparently not very popular and that's the reason why I started this channel. So I'll be doing all that stuff on Patreon. Um, so anyways, if you're interested in that and I'll be offering a bunch of other stuff, uh, I'll have it down in the description below and I'll start putting it in all my videos. So thanks. And with that, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.